friends, it's time to get started on replacing our coolant temperature sensor. To do that, it's going to be located right here along the driver's side of the engine, very close to the exhaust. When we do this, we're going to have to make sure that we drain the coolant because there is coolant behind this area. Let's make our way over to the radiator cap. You want to make sure that it's nice and cool to the touch. You didn't just come back from a ride. You don't want to open it up when it's hot because it will be under pressure. We're going to go ahead and press this down, turn it counterclockwise to unlock it, and lift it up and away from our face. We'll give it a quick inspection. Assuming it looks good, set it aside. Now that the radiator cap's off of there, let's make our way underneath the front of the vehicle. We're going to go ahead and remove this plastic shield. Looking at the plastic shield, you're going to find a whole bunch of plastic push clips. To remove these clips, all you have to do is use a trim tool or even just use some cutters and carefully grab onto the center without actually breaking the plastic and then just pull that down. Once it's unlocked, it should slide right out. There's going to be several that come along inside this area and you're also going to notice that you have two inside of each of the wheel wells along this area and then another one right here. Remove your shield. Now that we have that out of the way, we have a nice clear view of the bottom of the radiator. Over on the driver's side, you're going to find the petcock, which is considered the drain for the radiator. Now when I remove this, coolant's going to come out of it. I want to make sure I don't have anything underneath it that might get in the way and divert that coolant so it makes a mess. What we need to happen is this needs to be out of the way. We're going to try to divert this coolant directly into a receptacle so we can recycle it properly. Now with that said, you're going to try to find the mounting points for this wiring harness. There's one located right here. So I'm just going to use a pick. You can use a small screwdriver or whatever you might happen to have. Carefully get in between this area up along here and break it free. Once that's open, you can grab onto that wiring harness. We'll give it a little tug and just try to pull it aside so it's free and clear of this area. Now what you can see that I did here is I used a small piece of cardboard and I just essentially made a little funneling area to divert everything away from this area so it doesn't make a mess everywhere. Now we can go ahead and open this up, keeping in mind that coolant will come out of it. You need to have hand and eye protection at all times and a collection receptacle under this area. Let's go ahead and carefully grab onto this. We're going to turn it counterclockwise and we should start seeing some coolant come out. Now at this point, you can tell that I've drained out the majority of the coolant. It still has a little bit of a drip, but I'm not necessarily so worried about that. Let's just go ahead and close this off and we'll snug it up. Let's get our wiring resituated. Lock it in so it's secure. Now that that's drained, let's move down along this area. I'm going to grab onto the tab for the electrical connector. And just try to remove it from the sensor. So here's the tab that I had to grab onto. It was kind of along the back side. So I just grabbed it, drew it away from the sensor a little bit, and then slid this down. Once it's disconnected, give the harness a quick inspection. If you see funny colors, it's corrosion, and it would need to be dealt with. This looks fine. To take the sensor out of the engine, you could use a 19 millimeter. What you might notice is using a 19 millimeter socket only goes on to it a little bit. For me personally, I'm going to go ahead and use a ratchet wrench. If you don't have one, just go ahead and try using that socket. Keep in mind, there could still be coolant in this area, so make sure you have a collection bucket under here. There it is, friends. Looking at the old sensor compared to the new one, I just wanted to talk to you about the threading on it. You can tell exactly how far this sensor was put into the engine. It wasn't screwed all the way in till the threading was gone. I just want to make a note of that, so when you put in the brand new one, you only go approximately three quarters of the way up the threads. Let's get this in here.
Now we can reconnect in our wire, slide it in, listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure it's secure. You also want to make sure the wire doesn't go anywhere near the exhaust. Let's make our way back underneath the driver's side of the vehicle. We'll just make sure that the petcock's closed and tight. Then we can start putting up our splash shield. For this, you want to make sure it goes up and over the ears that are underneath the bumper cover. After that, go ahead and put in all of your push clips. Okay, now it's time to fill our cooling system. Typically, it's a good idea to use some sort of a funnel if you don't have a specialty tool to be able to fill the cooling system. Now, when you fill this, you need to use the manufacturer specified fluid. You don't want to use green coolant. If you were to look at the overflow tank, you can see that it tells you to use a specific type, Dex Cool. It's kind of like a pink red. If you don't have access to that, you can also use a universal fluid. You just want to make sure that it's 50-50 mixed, so it's not complete concentrate. So all I'm going to do is just take some coolant. We'll pour it right in here. This is the universal coolant, so that's why it's this color. It's not green. It's actually yellow. We'll just go ahead and fill up the cooling system. Once it's full, we can go ahead and start it up and burp out any air in the system. Now the next thing that we want to do is go ahead and start up the vehicle. We're going to let it run for a while. What we need to happen is the cooling fans, they need to be able to turn on. Once those turn on, that's going to tell us that the thermostat's open and we should have some hot heat blowing out the vents. At that point, there shouldn't be any more air inside the system and we can go ahead and turn off the car and then of course we can remove the coolant funnel. Once you're sure it's full and there's no air in the system, let's go ahead and reinstall the radiator cap and make sure it's nice and tight. Once the radiator is full, let's make our way over to the coolant overflow. You want to pay attention to the side along here. Essentially, you want to make sure it's up to the full cold line. That's that bottom line right there. And definitely not too much higher than the full hot line. Just get it anywhere in between. Cap it off when you're done.